Not every implementation of the Steam Input API is handled the same, and sometimes that means we get a suboptimal experience with it. So I'll be going through games that support Siapi and assigning a score to the end result. My name's Critical Composer, and this is Siapi Scrutiny. Today we are looking at Hyper Universe, a reimagining of the MOBA genre by way of 2D platformers and brawlers. Now I'm just going to say this outright. This is probably one of the worst implementations of the Steam Input API that someone could do. It isn't THE worst, it's at least semi-functional, but there are plenty of missteps here to discuss. Normally, I don't drag things through the mud, that isn't my style, but between the game shutting down and all the lessons that can be learned here, I've decided to proceed with a predominantly negative tone of criticism for this video. As a foreword, I preemptively apologize to any C-Wave dev that watches this, who might feel personally attacked. I don't mean any disrespect, and I understand that Siapi is a new API and that perfect implementations will be a rarity for a while. However, I hope you all see this as the learning opportunity that it is, for all devs, and not as a public shaming. The first issue can be seen from the very first look at the official config. It's indistinguishable from an X input config. When I first saw this, I honestly thought there was some miscommunication and that this game didn't actually support Siapi. But upon closer inspection, we can see that the in-game actions don't have real names, but are instead labeled as the Xbox buttons that they pertain to. This is the first mistake. In-game actions should have labels that describe their actions so that they can be assigned without knowing what the hypothetical default X input config looks like. I shouldn't have to know that A is the jump button so that I can assign the A button for jumping. This is what we do with legacy configs, and the obvious shortcomings of this method is why Siapi exists at all. Following this up, if we look closer at the in-game action list, then we'll find an odd pair of actions. Left and right grip. These actions do nothing since an Xbox controller doesn't have these inputs for an action to be referenced from. They seem to exist because the Steam controller has grips and they wanted an action for every possible button, even if that action doesn't actually do anything. And the last issue with the in-game action list is that it doesn't contain every action. There are six actions that are accessed by holding the left stick click. These are used to upgrade your skills when you level up. These should all be discrete actions with labels such as Upgrade Skill X. While we could still technically make these bindings by using multi-button bindings, the purpose of CAPI is to remove the need to do so. Okay, this is an interesting one. The basic input styles eschew the joystick move style in favor of the directional pad input style, with joystick mappings to each direction. This takes an analog input source and translates it to a digital output. The result is that the user only has access to the eight cardinal and intermediate directions, and every output is as if you were constantly slamming the joystick to the edge. Fortunately, this mistake doesn't affect the core gameplay since characters only move at one speed, and diagonal directions aren't used. It does, however, make navigating the main screen impossible since it is handled by manipulating the cursor with a joystick. I tried to change this input style to joystick move, but the game didn't accept the input. Being that the game makes use of digital movement in a match, but mouse cursor control in menus, it would make perfect sense to create an action set for both states. But nope. This game utilizes just a single action set and users are expected to cram two diverse configs into it. Well, Hyper Universe only has Xbox glyphs, even for the native DualShock support, oddly. And it doesn't read the config to update these glyphs. That's about all I need to say here. This game doesn't support vibration on any device, natively supported or through Siapi. To start, there is only a Steam Controller config. 
You can, of course, force this config into any controller and edit it, but the lack of dedicated configs for other controllers is typically a clue that no other controllers were intentionally supported through Siapi. Now, the config is a one-to-one -one recreation of an Xbox controller, which means that nothing unique to Steam input is being utilized. And we can't forget about those odd grip buttons. Speaking of odd, there are in-game actions for right stick up, down, left, and right, but they aren't bound anywhere. The right pad is set up as a single button bound to the X input right stick click. Overall, this is a huge failure to properly implement the Steam Input API. The in-game action list is missing actions, though they are still accessible by an in-game modifier. The basic input styles are lacking, some of the advanced input styles don't function, the analog input sources are only allowed to output as digital bindings, glyphs are not dynamic, there is only a single action set, and the official config is a mess. However, it is not a total failure. While it is woefully underbaked, it does technically work without the need to bind legacy keys or reach for my keyboard or mouse. So, I mean, at least the entire game is playable with Siapi. And as I stated earlier, the analog to digital conversion actually doesn't hinder the actual gameplay at all. Despite being playable, Hyper Universe gets a 0 out of 5 stars. I'm kinda glad that Sea Wave ended up handling Siapi this way. Sometimes an example of how not to do something is just as informative as how to properly do something, and I'm thinking that Hyper Universe will be a great source of information for future devs looking to implement the Steam Input API.